Hello and welcome to FPGA Accelerators for Compute Intel Pack. My name is Paweł Olejniczak and I'm working at Intel as part of Systems Solution Engineering. Today I want to talk to you about our programmable acceleration cards. Real-world examples where FPGA-based platforms help solve difficult problems and as well what Intel provides to ease adoption of such a solution. In the next four to five years, we're going to see unprecedented explosion in data, data essential to your everyday life. In 2020, the average internet user is using one and a half gigabyte of traffic every day. Autonomous vehicles will produce four terabytes of data every day. Connected airplanes will produce five terabytes of data daily. But that's only the beginning. Mars smart factories will produce one petabyte of data a day and cloud video producers will use 750 petabytes of video every day, whether on Earth or in other places. One can only imagine what we will need to handle when Mars will become our second home. That's an unbelievable amount of data which needs to be transported and processed. In many future applications, the amount of processing required will exceed the current capacity to deliver efficiently. CPUs will continue to advance to become more powerful and efficient, but some applications will require a hardware accelerator. This could be an ASIC or application-specific standard product. These deliver excellent performance and power efficiency in the application they were developed for. But in areas where the use is less specific or subject to rapid change, these devices may have a limited lifespan or even be obsolete before they are in full production, not to mention an unknown environment which we'll need to adapt to. If a generic solution is required, generally this is provided by a powerful CPU, but where more performance is required, an FPGA or GPU can be used to offload the processor and deliver better performance and power efficiency. GPUs are designed to offer generic performance, but they can still be subject to architectural and implementation limitations. With the FPGA, the hardware architecture is completely user-defined, giving the possibility of higher performance and more appropriate architectures that inherently deliver better performance. What is an FPGA? You probably already know, given this conference, but let's quickly recap that it's a spatial matrix of different compute and communication components. All those components come together to form custom hardware you desire. Here's one example of how FPGAs are used to enable inline or look-aside acceleration. Lookaside acceleration allows us to offload heavy compute data functions to the FPGA to free up the processor when latency is critical. Inline acceleration enables greater network throughput, storage access, and compute acceleration via FPGA versatility. No other acceleration solution has this architectural flexibility. We are already seeing FPGA acceleration function units addressing problems in many fields like edge computing, AI, or security. Let's look at some application solving compute challenges. Our first example is a database acceleration. Relational databases are coming ubiquitous as data analytics takes hold of everything from e-commerce to advertising. Swarm64, an Intel partner, uses latest generation FPGAs to process data with greater degrees of parallelism and achieve higher throughput. Swarm64 SDA is a seamless plugin that enables popular databases to handle higher speed big data. In this example of inline acceleration, data is conditioned and compressed before storing in the database. And the results speak for themselves, with 10 times faster analytics, two times faster data warehousing, and three times the storage compression. Another example is network security with Suricata. 
Suricata is an open source based intrusion detection and intrusion prevention system. Here, FPGA is used for level intercept or data replication of selected traffic. City Hacksaw is using FPGAs for image transcoding from JPEG to WebP. This is used to offload tasks as thumbnail generation or watermarking images. Rignac in turn solves IO bottlenecks resulting in latency reduction and increased throughput for critical workloads such as NoSQL, Search, and AI. This is supported without software changes to existing applications. The company's distributed data engine is benefiting databases, file system, and storage solutions, freeing up more CPU resources. So if FPGAs are such a great technology, why are you only hearing of it right now? Actually, many leading organizations have been using it for years, large scale telecommunication, medical and military companies have been using this technology for generations. And recently, large cloud providers have made FPGAs a key part of their solution strategy. The issue is that FPGAs in the past required expertise and resources to take full advantage of their capabilities, which only few organizations have. First, a board would need to be developed, tested and qualified. Application developers would need to know how to communicate to the FPGA to write drivers and libraries. Acceleration development running on FPGAs needs expertise in coding, RTL, HDL, and knowledge of the architecture. Additionally, if not planned properly, an organization would need to do significant reinvestment for each of the above, for each new FPGA product. This is where the power of greater Intel comes in. Since acquiring Altera at the end of 2015, Intel has been investing in these areas in order to bring the capabilities of FPGA to everyone. Intel's solution is one API, a project to deliver a unified software development environment across CPU, FPGA, and other acceleration architectures. It includes a unified language and libraries that deliver full native code performance and that native code performance across a range of hardware, including CPUs, GPUs, FPGAs, and AI accelerators. One API is the foundational programming stack, and it's used to optimize middleware, as well as frameworks that sit on top of it. This is based on open source specifications and standards for cross-vendor compatibility. Intel's product is a reference implementation one API tools. This includes profilers and debuggers that span the software stack. The idea behind one API is to allow for common developer experiences across the architectures and to enable the use of unified language and libraries for expressing parallelism. Under the hood we will find data parallel C++ a high-level language designed for data parallel programming productivity based on the C++ language for broad compatibility. This provides full native performance on par with the standard C++, simplifies code migration from proprietary languages with programming model familiar to GPU software developers. Starting point for it was SQL being developed under the industry consortium Kronos Group. Intel is addressing gaps in the language through extensions that will drive into the standard. This also includes source code to source code compatibility tool that will assist CUDA tra translations to data parallel C++. Also leverages well-proven LLVM compiler technology as well as Intel's compiler experience. One API enables experienced users to take advantage of software development approach without limiting their ability to leverage underlying architecture of the hardware. Making trade-offs on resource utilization and performance can be achieved by Pragmas, while runtime analysis helps to fine-tune those. 
Creating a unified development environment doesn't stop with just one tool. It takes a portfolio. Software developers, algorithm designers, embedded system designers, and hardware engineers all have their own way of relating to the system and their own preference in ways to capture and discuss the design. Intel provides the right language for each group, from callable function libraries and OpenCL compiler for software developers, to traditional hardware description language tools for hardware engineers. All feed into a common development environment that creates the FPGA configuration and allows debugging. Intel Software Acceleration Stack connects a PCIe accelerator card with Xeon processor. Custom software application running on the processor offloads computationally intensive tasks to the card. To leverage the flexibility of the FPGA, you can reconfigure a special partial reconfiguration region of the Intel FPGA at runtime. You can design multiple acceleration functional units to swap in and out of this PR region. The open programmable acceleration engine software running on the processor handles all the details of the reconfiguration process and also accessing the AFU resources. A flat compile model is also supported where in the FPGA interface manager or factory image is merged by the user with their custom logic and compiled into a single bitstream. OPAE also provides libraries, drivers, and sample programs that help in developing the applicational functional unit. To simplify the reconfiguration process, OPAE defines two bitstreams. First, the FPGA interface manager, which contains the FPGA logic to support the accelerator, including PCI IP code, CCIP fabric, DDR memory management engine, and such. The other one is the PR region, which can, can be programmed with application function unit, which is user-defined logic. From the OS point of view, the FPGA hardware appears as a regular PCIe device. Features supported by a particular FPGA device are exposed through the data structure called device feature list. The Open Programmable Acceleration Engine is the host software included in Intel Acceleration Stack for all programmable acceleration cards. All code is open sourced, covered by GPL or PSD licenses. The unified C, C++, Python API is used for all pack cards and applications. For example, a single user space application can use the FPGA to excel certain algorithms. As another example, resource management and orchestration services in the data center can use the same API to discover and select the FPGA resources and dice them up to be used by different workloads. Linux kernel driver is included in Intel acceleration stack releases and is actively being upstreamed to the Linux kernel to enable FPGA support out of the box. Lightweight user space library provides an abstraction layer built on top of the driver stack that supports FPGA device. The library abstracts away hardware OS specific details and exposes FPGA resources as set of features accessible by software programs running on host. The user space tools provide board level management and telemetry in addition to programming support. The ASE simulation environment provides a consistent transaction level hardware interface and software API that allows development of a production quality APUs and host software application. To use ASE environment, you must have source code in a language that RTL simulators can interpret, as well as access to third-party simulators such as Synopsys VCS or Mentor Graphics Questa Core. For either inline processing or look-aside acceleration use model, we are developing acceleration libraries framework, which provides the most efficient way to build FPGA-based accelerators. This consists of two parts, a collection of primitives designed by RTL experts and 
API function calls which wrap around those functions designed by software experts. As you can see, we have a plethora of libraries implemented already uh, with math and statistics in mind. Some of those also provide example designs which can be used out of the box with pack cards. I've mentioned uh, pack cards multiple times in this presentation, so let's actually look how they are constructed. On the lower end, we have uh, our Yacht 10 GX pack card with 1.1 million logic elements, onboard DDR4 memory, network and PCIe connectivity. On board, you will also find a board management controller which provides telemetry services remotely. All this closed in 70 watt TDP envelope. On to something more beefier, uh, the Intel FPGA Pack D5005. D5005 has 2.8 million logic elements as well as more memory than the previous card. Um, the network connectivity is also upgraded. Unfortunately, this comes with the cost of increased TDP. Stratix 10 here has more concurrent access to onboard memory as well as wider PCIe connection, which is very beneficial for memory intensive uh, applications. We also supply a pack card optimized for networking applications, the Pack N3000. This slide shows the evolution of applications from 2G to 5G. Everyone remembers 2G focused on voice. When 3G was being introduced, it started the apps revolution and texting and introduced the basic web browsing. Later on, we have 4G LT. 4G was about faster data delivery and more usage. The evolution of smartphones, both Android and iOS, changing the usage of phone from voice cam to data cam. Meanwhile, 5G is not only driven by voice and data communication, but rather more towards non-human centric devices. Ultra reliability, low latency communication will address critical needs communication and massive machine type communication to address IoT like applications. Due to proliferation of use cases going into 5G will require agility, scalability and intelligence across the network cloud and the client. Those growing bandwidth requirements spurred a change in approach to building network infrastructure, where proprietary equipment with fixed function is being replaced with commercial off-the-shelf servers with FPGAs and open standards. Industry has started using PAC to accelerate 5G network functions from radio access and beamforming to signal coding, routing and security. This caused N3000 to land in multiple places in the overall network infrastructure, serving a multitude of different functions. Pack N3000 most notably differs from ARIA GX with the inclusion of two standard network interface chips which help transferring network traffic to the host. Additionally, amount of onboard memory is increased twice. QDR4 also helps with memory latency sensitive applications. All those features allowed Rakuten to deploy Pack N3000 all over their Japanese 5G network, which is already being used by thousands of users every day. 
Another place where FPGA acceleration cards found their place is vision processing. Mac Computing deployed their real-time analytics AI, which covers video processing and is currently used to monitor social distancing, body temperature, and personal protection equipment compliance, as well as managing inventory and enhancing access control systems with smart surveillance. Visual inference requirements differ depending on application. Sometimes it's a smart surveillance camera, another time an industrial robot, or a remote space probe. That's why we do not have a generic solution to all those problems. That is why Intel came up with Open Vino Toolkit, a common framework for computer vision and deep learning. One common API covering different hardware architectures, including FPGAs. This toolkit is designed to increase performance and reduce development time for computer vision solution. It simplifies access to benefits from the rich set of hardware options available from Intel, which can increase performance, reduce power, and maximize hardware utilizations, letting you do more with less and opening new design possibilities. A full high-performance vision streaming and analysis pipeline can be built with Intel components. With the help of Intel Media SDK, you can leverage accelerators built into CPU and GPU, while inference can be done on FPGA platforms. OpenVINO comes with Deep Learning Deployment Toolkit, inputting training models from standard frameworks such as CAFI, TensorFlow, and MXNet. The model optimizer converts the inputted models into a unified intermediate representation file that is then run on inference engine. Loading CAFI or other frameworks is not required if using standard layers or user-provided custom layers. The API for inference engine has abstracted the hardware and is common across all hardware types. This allows for testing across different accelerators without having to recode. The toolkit includes optimized pre-trained models to expedite development and improve deep learning inference. For example, age and gender detection, vehicle detection, emotion recognition, identification of roadside objects, and gaze estimation. Here's the current list of primitives supported to run on FPGAs, as well as the list of tested neural network topologies that can be accelerated on FPGA boards. Not every FPGA image shipped has all of the primitives, so just find the image that best matches your network. Using OpenCL, you can always add primitives to custom FPGA images. Keep in mind also that the list of supported primitives and topologies are constantly changing, and check the documentation for the latest supported primitive list. For example, our partner IEI also offers a platform dedicated for video analytics. This is a high performance, low latency solution with many pre-built bitstreams supporting different neural networks. Just to summarize what I've talked about. Intel programmable acceleration cards are verified designs available right on the shelf, providing low latency, deterministic and high performance solution, which is energy efficient in given application. Presented toolkits should greatly help with ease of development and Intel is also providing software support for orchestration and scaling out a solution. But this is just the beginning. We continue to see how we can provide other platforms in order to give choices of deployment and 
add new capabilities. This means adding AJAX 10 to the list of hardware platforms in the future. This means providing higher performance and increasing connectivity options. This means also taking a look at other FPGA integration options, other than just PAC and Xeon scalable platform with integrated FPGA. Because the acceleration stack provides a common user interface with drivers and libraries in this current and future platforms, Intel sees partners and customers taking full advantage of the solution. Intel's acceleration partners will know that their solution can be deployed and used by as many of their customers as possible. Customers will know that their investment in Intel FPGA technology can be leveraged and reused in supplemental product development and in future generations. And we are not working alone. There is a growing list of partners joining this vision. To support this significant endeavor, Intel has launched a new site, the Intel FPGA Acceleration Hub, www.intel.com slash FPGA Acceleration Hub. It will house a new collection of software, firmware, tools, and other resources that will allow developers and other new customers to leverage the power of Intel FPGAs. Intel is uniquely positioned to power computing in an increasingly data-rich world, and we want to deliver the best customer experience on the planet, or two. Intel is building the future with the technologies we invent and the amazing experiences we deliver. What will you build? Thank you.